Headers are what we put at the very top of all our spreadsheets. As you'll see here in row 5 to 11, we've got a whole bunch of items and a whole bunch of numbers here. Just a couple of things about headers before we understand what's in here. As per our good practice, you'll notice that on this sheet, row 5, column F, that's where our headers start. If you look at all our other sheets, you'll see row 5, column F, it starts. Row 5, column F, it starts. Another thing we do is we have a single place where we do our calculations. You'll see these various formulas here. All these other ones link to those cells. That way, because we're being consistent, if something changes here, all these headers will change and then they will affect the various calculations. Headers allow you to simplify the formula you're working with and also make it easier to use the financial model. So for example, our typical headers would probably contain at least these items. So you'll see we've got an operational period and zeros if we're not operational, perhaps under construction, ones where we are operational. We've got something called cumulative months where you'll see it goes from 1 to month 12 and then it keeps adding, month 13, 14, etc. We've got the months in the year, so you'll see it goes from 1 to 12 and then it restarts 1 to 12 again. We've got something called a summarizing period. So the first 12 months have got a 1, the next 12 months have got a 2. So this helps us understand that these months belong to year 1 in this case and these months belong to year 2. We even have a period type where we, where we specify what that column is. It's a month. If we've got a model that changes, it's, this may say quarter or year. We've got the period end dates. So you'll see we've actually got dates here. And then we've even got the month as a number. So that's 31st of March 2010. What month is it? It's month three. So what this allows you to do is to create simple formulas and it's just a lot easier to use the model. So from a, a human use perspective, if I'm down here and I'm, for example, in row 50, 51, it's very easy for me to see, oh, something's happened here. Let me see, oh, it's August. And I can then make decisions based on that. It also helps you to simplify your formulas. So for example, if I've got something like this, interest is charged monthly, but for tax purposes, it's only in a certain month. He has a potential formula. So what we're saying is look at that month and then compare it to a certain month and put a zero or the amount. So that's one way of doing it. Or if we have set up a header, we've set up this operational period, zeros and ones, we can use that formula there which is as simple as take whether we're operational or not and multiply it by that. So just another example of simplifying the formula. You'll see if we're after month 15, we're going to charge a certain amount. Here's a formula. So what's happening is it's going here and counting how many zeros it sees and then decides whether it should include the cost or not. If you have this cumulative month set up, the formula is much easier. It just says, look at what month we're in, compared to what month we want, do something. What it also allows you to do is to reuse formulas. So if we look here, the alternate formula is here. I'm going to pay VAT every two months. And you'll see I've got a calculation that's checking the month using the month function and dividing it by two and then trying to figure out is it an even month. If I go a little bit late, lower down here, you'll see this formula over here for the payments to the tax man is also using the month formula. So we're repeating this month function regularly. Alternatively, what we could do is here's our header, it does the month function, and then when we look here, you'll see it uses the month function. If we look here, you'll see it uses the month function. So instead of retyping the same formula again and again, formulas we regularly use, we put up here, and then we can just refer 
directly to them. Although these are our typical headers, what we find is depending on the type of model, we'll add a number of other items here. So for example, if we're working on a mobile phone company, perhaps number of subscribers should be here. Because perhaps in our calculations, we're continually having to look at the number of subscribers and things happen depending on whether we're gaining or losing subscribers. If we're working on a mine, then perhaps it's tons. So whatever's important, whatever you're gonna reuse again and again, you can include in this header.